Hello everyone! In this week's video, I'm turning myself into video game characters. I posted on my community tab asking which video you all would like to see the most, and a majority of you wanted to see me draw myself as video game characters again. I had a lot of fun doing this the first time in the first video, so I'm happy so many of you wanted to see me do it again. In the first video, I drew myself as an Animal Crossing animal villager, a Sonic character, and a Hylian from The Legend of Zelda. I'll leave a link to that video in the description if you want to check it out. Anyways, let's get started. For this first picture, I'm drawing myself as a Puyo Puyo character. If you don't know what Puyo Puyo is, it is a puzzle color matching game. You may know it as Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Puyo Puyo has these cute characters that you play as, and they all have different things that they say and different animations that they do when you pop Puyos. The style in each Puyo Puyo game is a little different, like the overall style is the same, but like it's just slightly different. Uh, the style I decided to go with was the Puyo Puyo Tetris style. I chose this game style because it's the only Puyo Puyo game I've played, uh, besides Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. The characters are really cute and kind of chibi-like. It's mostly their faces that are chibi-like. Their bodies are kind of long, uh, especially their legs. So I really tried to mimic that with my character. Also, for pretty much all of these, I'll be skipping the sketching process and showing only the line art and coloring process. The line art in Puyo Puyo is smooth, thick, and also has some line variation. The lines on the outside seem to be a bit thicker than the lines they use on the inside of the designs. I actually feel like I could have made my line art thicker. When I compare the line art of my character to the other characters, I noticed that it wasn't quite as thick, uh, so I should have made it a bit thicker. Now, I don't know a ton about the story in Puyo Puyo because I have only played Puyo Puyo Tetris, but it seems like there's a magical school where many of the characters go to learn about magic, but there are also some characters that don't learn magic. I decided I'm a person with no magic abilities, and my design and catchphrases are themed around art. The poses that the characters stand in really express their personality, so I tried to draw myself in a kind of nervous looking pose. I noticed many of the girl characters wear skirts and dresses. I decided to kind of give myself a sweater dress with a pair of leggings. This is something I'd wear in real life. I also add splotches of paint on the sweater because when I paint, I pretty much always get paint on my clothes. Uh, so I try to wear painting clothes when I paint. I also gave myself a little bag that's filled with art supplies. I thought this would help the design feel a little bit more interesting. Also, I apologize if you can hear my laptop. It's deciding to be super noisy today. Hopefully I'll be able to remove it in editing. So now I'm going to fill in the base colors. I really like the color teal, so I mainly use that in my color scheme. I made my leggings a dark gray, the bag a light pink, and my shoes a darker teal. The shoes really remind me of Sonic characters, and it's kind of funny because Puyo Puyo is made by Sega, and they made Sonic the Hedgehog. It amuses me that the shoes and socks are so similar in style. The shading in Puyo Puyo is very simple. It seems to apply a light gradient uh, to the different parts of the character, and then a lighter color around the edges for the highlight. It's a really quick, easy way to shade the picture. So in Puyo Puyo Tetris, all the characters kind of have little stories that you play through, and as you play Puyo battles, you progress through the story. So I decided my story is that I am an art student that doesn't like to battle. I try to avoid them at all costs, but for some reason people always end up challenging me to battle. <laughs> I know it's a simple story, but many of the stories in Puyo Puyo, especially the side ones, are pretty simple. I imagine it'd be kind of comical because I'd be trying to mind my own business and just live my life, but I always end up getting sucked into Puyo Puyo battles. <laughs> And like I mentioned, all the characters have catchphrases that they say when they pop Puyos. So I imagine my catchphrases would be something like Paper Pencil Eraser Sketch Fine Liners Color Pencils Watercolor <laughs> Something like that. So here is me as a Puyo Puyo character. I tried to mimic the character cards from the Puyo website. I also edited myself into a screenshot from Puyo Puyo. This wasn't really necessary, but it's really fun seeing my character next to the other ones as if it's in the game. I want to learn this new skill, but I don't know how. Hello? Huh? Who are you? 
Why are you outside my window? You should check out Skillshare. What's that? Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. Members get unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes with hands-on projects. There are classes on graphic design, music, web development, freelance, and entrepreneurship. Okay, okay, I think I get it. I'll check out Skillshare. Uh, so I'm trying to format my novel. Is there a class on that? You bet there is. You can check out Book Design Basics Styling Novel Interiors with InDesign by Neil Swab. In this class, designer and illustrator Neil Swab walks you through the process of designing the interior of a standard novel, from practical page navigation to executing conceptual elements like mood, tone, and style. Recently, I've been trying to format my light novel, and I was completely lost until I found classes on Skillshare to help me. Now my light novel is actually starting to look like a book. It's kind of cool. So how much does Skillshare cost? Skillshare is less than $10 a month with an annual subscription, but because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, wait, we're in a video? The first 1,000 people to use this link will get a two-month free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. So try Skillshare today, and thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So the next video game style I'm drawing myself in is Stardew Valley. If you don't know what Stardew Valley is, it's a game where... How do I describe it? It's basically a farming simulator game similar to Harvest Moon or Story of Seasons. You run your farm and try to befriend people. You can date and get married. Uh, you can also do things like fish, mine, and fight monsters. The graphics of Stardew Valley are done in pixel art. I start by sketching my character portrait normally because I don't know how to sketch for pixel art. After finishing my sketch, I lower the resolution. According to people on the internet, the portraits in Stardew Valley are 64 pixels by 64 pixels. So I change my canvas to that resolution. Now that I have a pixely version of my sketch, I start going over it with color. For my pen, I keep switching it back and forth between anti-aliasing and no anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing adds little pixels to help make the lines you draw smoother. We usually don't really see them much for full-sized pictures, but we can really see them when it comes to pixel art. I turn anti-aliasing off when I want to be really precise with where I place the pixels. One thing I learned from this is that pixel art is really hard. <laughs> I thought this would take me like 20 minutes or something. Uh, no, coloring this took me longer than doing the line art and the coloring for the Puyo Puyo design. <laughs> it's tricky because just slightly moving the pixels or slightly changing the colors really impacts how the design looks and how our eyes see the pixel art. Every pixel counts, it seems. I was also trying to avoid using the anti-aliasing because I know that's kind of a no-no when it comes to pixel art, uh, but I did use it a little bit for some of the shading. Thankfully, I didn't struggle with the eyes too much. I did kind of keep tweaking them throughout the process. I did forget about my glasses for a little bit and I had to add them later. The part I struggled with the most was the mouth. I was looking at the girl characters and they have really full lips. I feel like my lips are pretty thin. So it felt weird giving me such full lips. <laughs> I kept playing around with the shape and the color for a really long time. At this moment, I still wasn't totally pleased with them, but I decided to move on to the rest of the picture. So like I mentioned earlier, you can date and get married in Stardew Valley. If my character was one of the bachelorettes, I've decided it would be a lot of work to be able to marry me. <laughs> so you need to become good friends with my parents and eight siblings. You would need to raise their heart levels to at least four hearts. Also, instead of my heart level rising with every 250 friendship points, it would be with every 500 friendship points. <laughs> I don't warm up to people easily, so you'd have to really work to make me warm up to you. <laughs> also, it's hard to talk to me because I spend a lot of time in my room working on my art, and you can't enter a character's room in Stardew Valley until you are friends with them, so you'd have to find those little moments where I'm not in my room and try to talk to me. <laughs> So now my portrait is pretty much done, but I did go back to change the lips. Instead of looking at the girl lips, I took a look at the guy's lips, and I felt like those worked better for my face. So here's my portrait, but I also need my little avatar that walks around on screen, so I made this really quick. 
This wasn't too tricky because I basically just copied the pixel count from the other characters in the game. So here is me in the style of Stardew Valley. Rebecca lives with her eight siblings and her mom and dad. Rebecca is pretty much always at home. She occasionally goes to the market to buy groceries with her mom. If you say hello to her, she'll say hello back, but not much else. I also made a fake screenshot for this. It's kind of funny because the me in the game is talking to me. <laughs> so the last thing I'm turning myself into is Noctiling from Splatoon 2. If you don't know what Splatoon is, it's a game where you are these human-like characters that can turn into squids or octopi. In the game, you basically try to cover the map in the color of your ink. There are different game modes where you try to accomplish different things, but the main mode is Turf Wars. The squid characters known as Inklings are kind of the main character that you play as. Octolings were made playable in Splatoon 2 with the Octo Expansion Pass DLC. I kept going back and forth if I should make myself an Inkling or an Octoling. I decided to play Splatoon for a little bit to help me design my character because I wanted to use actual clothes from the game. And one thing I noticed when I was playing is that Inklings seem to be very confident in the way they carry themselves. Uh, something I am not. <laughs> so I thought my personality would maybe better fit an Octoling. Plus my hairstyle is pretty close to theirs, uh, so it'd be easy to change it to fit me. It was so much fun getting to draw an Octoling. I love drawing them. I've drawn them in my sketchbook a few different times. Their proportions are kind of interesting. They have very small shoulders, wide hips, and kind of thin legs with large feet. The arms also get wider towards the bottom because their hands are pretty large. I always enjoy videos like this where I get to draw in different styles because it's fun getting to play around with different proportions like this. It reminds me that there aren't totally set rules when it comes to art and you can kind of play around with proportions. Also for the line art and coloring, I kind of just used my own style. I could have tried to mimic the style from the Splatoon 2 art book, but I kind of just wanted to use my own style for this. I'm using the textured pen again for the line art. It is slowly becoming my favorite pen. Also, in my last video, I mentioned I wanted to make the textured pen like my G pen. Uh, I figured out a way to do that. It was actually really easy. I just had to go into the settings and then select a different brush shape. And now I have a smooth brush that behaves like the textured pen. So I'm happy about that. <laughs> I finished line art for the character, so I start filling in the base colors. I'm going to go back to the roller later. I had sketched it out, but I needed to grab my art book again to get all of the details in place because I was using that as my reference. For the most part, I'm just filling myself in with the same colors from the game. I made my eyes brown because they are brown. <laughs> Before the hair, I need to make it one of the ink colors. I decided on this sort of purpley blue. Out of the listed ink colors, I thought this was a good fit. I didn't want to go with a super light color since I have dark hair, but I did really like some of the light colors. Now I'm working on the roller. When I play Splatoon, I often use a roller. I am terrible at aiming, and the roller doesn't really require you to aim very much. I do also like to use paintbrushes, but they hurt my wrist because I have to click the button so much. So I often end up going with rollers. The design for my roller is based off of the splat roller because that's the one that had the most pictures in the art book that I was referencing. Uh, but I usually use the Kensa splat roller, so I based the colors off of that roller. It better matches my outfit. <laughs> so now I'm moving on to the shading. Like I mentioned, I'm letting myself use my own shading style. I did try to play around with the colors a little bit though to make it better match the game and the way it looks. I feel like for a lot of my video game versions of myself, I draw myself looking shy or nervous. This time around, I wanted to draw my character as kind of cold or expressionless. I kind of have two versions of my nervousness, smiley and nervously laughing and trying to make conversation awkwardly, <laughs> or very straight face and expressionless. <laughs> Whichever one comes out kind of depends on the people, situation, and how I'm feeling that day. I feel like I can kind of come off as I don't care or standoffish or kind of serious sometimes. And I worry people think I'm being rude. <laughs> For the hair, I was trying my best to remember that they are tentacles and not hair. So I was trying to render them in a way that they look rounded. So I was trying to add more shading around the edges and make them lighter in the middle. 
I also wanted the hair to look really shiny uh, because in the game it looks really shiny. So I add some harder edged highlights uh, that are kind of a lighter blue. And I also add some small white highlights. For shoes, I'm wearing the punk shoes in the color black. They were a lot of fun to shade and make look shiny. I feel like that's one thing I got to work on in this illustration is rendering different textures like the shiny hair, the cloth of the clothes, the glass in the glasses, and it just had a bunch of different textures. For the shirt, I am wearing the short knit layers. I actually have shirts very similar to this one in real life. I love shirts with collars for some reason. I have since I was really young. I also love the layered look of like having a collar and then like a sweater over it. I never really know how to layer things. Uh, so I often buy clothes that are pre-layered. <laughs> oh, I also applied a texture to the shirt to help it feel more like cloth. And I did the same for the pants. Shading the pants went really quickly. I applied a dark color to them and then erased the color where I wanted the highlights to be. And now we're moving on to the eyes and I had so much fun shading the eyes. They are so big and I always feel like the octolings and inklings have such cute eyes. One thing I never really noticed is how small the highlight in the eyes are. I was looking at the game to see where they placed the highlights and they were so tiny. I always imagine them being pretty big because their eyes always seem like they're so shiny. Uh, but they actually just have a very small subtle highlight. I also really enjoyed shading the glasses. I added some lines of white to make them look shiny and then I lowered the opacity and then I filled the glasses in with white. I lowered the opacity of that and then erased the white on the lower left side and ta-da, we now have glass in the glasses. So here is me as an octoling from Splatoon 2. When it comes to turf battles, Rebecca prefers a more stealthy approach. She's not confident in her abilities on the front lines. Because of this, she often stays behind and inks as much turf as she can. I had so much fun drawing myself as video game characters. If you have any video game suggestions for future videos, please leave them in the comments. Also, thank you so much to this channel's patrons. I want to welcome Rogelio, Katie, Ada, Bela, and Terry to the Patreon community. Thank you so much for joining. That is all for this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!